Um, these are some Bible study notes taken from our Bible study on Thursday the 29th of February. And before listening to this, if you could read Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 7. There's a link to those verses below, and I'm reading from the ESV. Your levels of confidence depend on what is underneath you, the foundation that is underneath you. For example, if you're building a tower like this, because the foundation underneath you isn't steady, then your nerves will probably be a little uh, wobbly like this tower is. Whereas if the foundation underneath you is solid, your nerves are going to be a lot less. Your levels of confidence depend on the thing that is underneath you. The thing on which you place your trust. That thought is expressed in the Greek word for assurance or confidence in this, these verses. Assurance in the English translates as hypostasis in the Greek. Hyper, hyper means over, hypo means under. Stasis means a steady state, a period of stability. Believers can have stability in their most unstable of times because of that which is under them, the foundation on which their faith is based. Chapter 11 describes the faith of numerous individuals in various different situations at many different points in history. But the thing that connects them all is summarised by the sentence at the beginning. The sentence that starts with the word, we. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Before the writer launches into the faith of these many individuals, he reminds us of the foundation on which both our and their faith is based. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. The foundation of our faith is w the word of God. The foundation of the thing hypo under believers is what gives believers a stasis, stability in unstable times. And these original readers of this letter would need a strong foundation. For in chapter 10, the author describes their unstable experience. They endured great conflict full of suffering from day one of coming to faith. They experienced hatred and persecution and injustice. They were taken from their homes, their one place of stability, and imprisoned or had their homes destroyed. And yet, because of their confidence in the word of God, they remained stable. But why? Why does the fact that the universe was created by the word of God give us stability? Well, imagine person A. Person A believes the universe was created by the word of God. That God said, let there be light, and there was light. Person B believes in theistic evolution. That God worked through evolution to create life on earth. And person C believes that the universe came about by random chance. How might these different foundations affect their faith and their confidence during difficult times? Well, if the universe came about by random chance, then anything could happen in the future. That's a very scary thing to think. Their life might work out. They might put their trust in things that are dependable. Or randomly, the things that they think they can trust might let them down. What about person A? Person A believes the universe was created by the word of God. But person B believes in theistic evolution that God worked through evolution to create life on earth. Who out of these two people's faith is going to be more stable during unstable times? Well, the more powerful a person is, the less words that they need to use. 
for example, an NHS cleaner campaigning for change will have to get the signature of every other cleaner in the country on a bit of paper and then make 10 speeches before Parliament before the demands for change will be heard. Whereas the CEO of a hospital, they click their fingers to change every cleaner's uniform from pink to green. The more powerful a person is, the less words they need to use. A supply teacher asks the class to please consider the possibility of maybe being a bit quiet. Nothing happens. The head teacher walks in and the class is silent. The more powerful the person is, the less words they need to use. The fact that the universe was created by the word of God should leave us in awe. The universe, all existing matter in space, came into being by the word of God. Everything visible came about the moment that God said. Does that not give you a sense of how powerful God's word is? This truth has helped God's people when they couldn't see how the promises of God could be fulfilled. If God created the universe out of nothing, then surely he could, he could fulfill the, his promises to them. This truth has helped God's people when they, when, they weren't sh um, when they saw things heading in the opposite direction to the things, they, the, in the, things heading in the direction, opposite direction to what they hoped. The Hebrews who saw injustice and experienced suffering, despite God's promise to vindicate them and reward their faith with joy. It gave them strength knowing that the universe was cre created by God, by the word of God, because they knew that God could change any situation in an instant. Faith, faith that the universe is cre was created by the word of God can help us have faith that God's word is powerful and can be trusted by you and me. God can and will do what he has said. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. But what about if you believe in theistic evolution, the belief that God set the process of evolution into motion, and from this process came life? that God set the laws of physics into motion and after billions of years, the universe was formed. If you believe this, it will undermine your confidence in God's word. You know, if God had to speak several times to create a land animal and God said, let this single cell become two cells and let these two cells become a fish and then this fish grow legs and let this fish walk on land and now let that walking fish and suddenly that fit walking fish gets eaten by a T-Rex for its dinner. It sounds like God had a plan to create a walking fish, but then it got eaten by a T-Rex. That's what evolution is, survival of the fittest. God was going to do one thing, but what he wanted to happen didn't occur. God tried to do another thing, and thankfully it worked. The T-Rex survived the process of survival of the fittest. If God speaks and sometimes what he wants to happen happens and sometimes what he wants to happen doesn't happen, how can we be sure he will fulfil his promises to us? But if we believe that the universe was created by the word of God, that God spoke and it came into being, then we have con can have confidence in God's ability to bring his plans about. Now, chapter 11 is sometimes given the subheading, the heroes of the faith, or the great cloud of witnesses. We see these people and we think they are heroes, people who have done great things. The first two great heroes of the faith are mentioned in verses 4 and 5. But before the author moves on to tell us about the next hero, he inserts verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. As I was studying this, I wondered why the author didn't save this thought till the very end. To the end of history's hero, the list of history's heroes. 
why did he inter interrupt his list and insert this point here? I wonder if it's because the outward achievements of these first two were so small. Abel brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. Genesis 4.4 4. Now to put this gift in perspective, imagine, a 10, 000, imagine 10 thousand lorries loaded with wheat have just left the 20 million acre farm of Nestle. As one of the lorries bumps over a speed bump, a grain of wheat falls to the ground. You pick up this single grain and run to catch up with the lorry and you hand it to the Nestle CEO. How impressed by the grain of wheat is he going to be? He's hardly going to reward you with a lifetime of shredded wheat. The grain of wheat you presented with him, him with, it's nothing. In much the same way, Abel's offering was nothing outwardly impressive. We just read in verse 3 that God created the universe. Abel gave God a crumb from the corner of his cookie. And yet God was pleased by this outwardly unimpressive act. Why? Because God delights more in inner faith than he does with outwardly impressive acts. It is this that pleases him. It is this that he rewards. We see this again in the example of Enoch. I mean, name one great thing the hero Enoch did. You can't, because nothing in Enoch's life is recorded. He would just simply know that he walked with God. He put God at the centre in his everyday activities. The everyday activities that history didn't see deem significant enough to record. The same is true for us. God is not necessarily impressed by the outward impressive or unimpressive things we do. He's impressed by the simple aspect of faith in the everyday. I began by saying that the foundation of all faith is the word of God. But how could Abel and Enoch have had faith in God's word? What word of God did they have available to them? They didn't have Bibles like we do today. Well, these were the first words that God spoke to human beings. Words which Abel and Enoch would have surely known. And the Lord God commanded the man. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. These limited few sentence that, the sentences that Abel and Enoch had taught them what? Well, it taught them that mankind was under the judgment of death and God was the source of life. We know that they built their life on this foundation because at the end of their earthly lives, verses 4 and 5 describe them as still living. Through his, Abel's faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. Abel and Enoch be believed and applied the few verses that God they had. Sorry, Abel and Enoch believed and applied the few words of God that they had. They believed that mankind was under the judgment of death and that God was the source of life. All you need to do to please God, to be in favour with God, is believe that. That you are under the judgment of death for your sin. But God is the source of life. Now, verse 6, you might think it should read, with faith it is possible to believe, please God. But it actually reads in the negative, without faith it is impossible to please God. We, in other words, we do not naturally please God. Without faith we stand condemned. For the majority of our thoughts, words and actions are not pleasing to him. This true yet negative view of all mankind is again expressed in verse 7. By this, his faith, he, Noah, condemned the world. 
the world, mankind in its entirety, stands condemned before God. If God gave us what we were due, we'd be punished, not rewarded. And yet, throughout God's word, we see God offering sinners a way that they might be saved. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. You know, we began by learning that the foundation of faith is the word of God. And if you read every word of God in Genesis, you'll find that God repeats the same message again and again and again. It's as if God is saying, if you only remember one thing, remember this. So what message does God play on repeat in the book of Genesis? Well, God's word to Adam and Eve condemned their sin. God's word to Cain condemned his murder. God spoke words of condemnation to the people who built Babel. God condemns the sexual morality of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. By the time we reach Jacob's family, Judah, we learn that Judah is very, very sexually immoral. And the rest of Jacob's family murder Joseph. They're no better either. By this time, we've got the point. All are sinners and all stand condemned. This truth is foundational to the Christian faith. But notice the other words that God speaks in Genesis. God promises Adam that one of his descendants will be a saviour. God places a mark on murderous Cain so that he might be saved from the same fate. God speaks to Abraham about blessing the world through one of his offspring. God saves Abraham's first offspring by providing a ram in his place. God listens to the plea of Abraham to save some within the walls of Sodom. God uses Joseph to save his sinful family from a time of famine. God repeatedly repeats the same identical message. All stand condemned. But God provides a way that sinners might be saved and even blessed. You know, God provided Noah with an ark, an ark to escape the condemnation with the world, an ark to save him from the judgment his sins deserved. Now God has given us another ark. He's given us his son, the Lord Jesus Christ so that we might escape the condemnation that we deserve for our sin and be saved to a right relationship with God. All those who share the same faith of Noah, just as Noah had faith in the ark, those who have faith in in God's son, Jesus Christ, they inherit the righteousness that comes by faith. And it is faith in what God has done for us not what we can do for him. It is faith in what God has done for us that can give us stability and unstable times. I mean, just think, when Newcastle played AC Milan in the last game of their Champions League match, just think about how much nervousness was in the air. They needed to win. No other result would do. Everything depended on the performance of the players. And when everything depends on you, It can be very unsettling. Thankfully, faith causes us to look away from ourselves and towards God. It's not what we have done that pleases God. It is not how much we do that determines our reward. It is not how much we do that determines the amount of faith that God shows. Our confidence is not in what we have done for God, but in what he has done for us and sending his own son into the world to die in our place, to rise from the dead, to give us the gift of eternal life. If you believe that, it'll give you great stability in your life. 